रॉन बैथ वर्सेज रायन बोवन आर वी जे वर्सेज जेम्स वॉल मिंडोगस वर्सेज टिम ब्रेजन एंड फाइनली द मेन इवेंट द फेमस एंड द इन फेमस थर्म टैक्स मैच बिटवीन अंकल जॉन एंड एवन द बियरमिन बर्गोइन दिस आर्म गॉड्स वेलहला थ्री कार्ड वॉज एब्सोल्यूटली अमेजिंग I think getting 17 super matches in great HD quality without any stream issues for $6 is a steal deal and I would recommend you to purchase this pay-per-view for watching this amazing 5 hours of arm wrestling. All of the matches except the title matches were best of 5 and the title matches were best of 7. 3 foul system with running fouls. Match number 1. David Bradford with a 4-0 victory over Tim Talmage the referee. The match was not close except for the first round maybe. So Tim got hand control in the first round but then he kind of lost it or gave it away for a flop press and after that it was all David Bradford with hand control easy 3 rounds victory. Mitch Tut versus Stefan. So 3-0 total domination from Mitch. Lee Weber dominated Rick with a 3-0 score too much hand control. Then fourth match Sean Patterson versus Darrell the left arm super match 4-0 Sean top roll victories but overall a good match Mate Varangi Hatta Morris versus James Stewart over 320 kilos on the table both were absolutely massive giants of human beings James showed his power in the first round and beat Mate Varangi Hatta Morris's king's move after that maybe he got tired and then in the second round he also had to resort to a king's move but that was playing in Hatta Morris's field and that's why Mata Evarangi took this match 3 pins to 1 with good king's moves and the final match was just a top roll flash pin Craig Sanders with a 3-1 victory over Kevin Kevin surprised in the first round with a flash pin Jordan Sonev 3-0 over Pork Chop I want to know who set this match up because this was never going to be a super match. I mean Jordan Sonev defeated Sandris Shedis last year. <laughs> What were you guys thinking when fixing this match? I am not sure. Jordan Sonev is closer to Devon Lerit from Canada than anyone else is to Jordan Sonev in Canada. I hope you get my point. And in one video I made a mistake by saying that Devon is practicing with Curtis because he's the second best guy in Canada. Second best guy is BLM who has convincingly defeated Pork Chop in the past. Tom Holland 4-0 victory over Oleg Todorian. Really really impressive. It's almost impossible to top roll Tom Holland unless you are like a top 3 or top 5 top roller in the world at that weight class and even beating him in a hook is really really difficult. Something only the top guys can do. Oleg Todorian is a top guy and yet he cannot do that. Matt Smith with a 4-3 victory over Connor Sale match of the year. For this match alone you should purchase the pay-per-view. Back and forth joint based hook trying to transition into a press, trying to transition into a top roll. This match had everything. One of the best hook wars that you are ever going to watch and that you have ever watched in the past. Plamen Dimitrov with four top roll victories over Adrian Popescu. Adrian no fundamentals Popescu got his hand taken and he was palm up and yet in that defensive broken wrist position he was able to hold Plamen Dimitrov for a good amount of time. Nick Dodd 3-1 victory over Stanley. Then Ron Bath versus Ryan Bowen. This was the match that I was looking forward to the most. and i will say that nobody disappointed in this match i was slightly favoring ryan bowen thinking that ron has aged a lot but no captain america has not aged at all i mean he literally looks like a mini richard lupkis yes ryan was only about 6 7 kilos lighter than ron but when you see these two together ron is a much bigger human being because even at 60 plus age he's lean he's shredded and looks in competition shape all year long First round I'll say Ryan almost got the hand control for the first 5 seconds Ryan was definitely in a better position than Ron Bath but Ron didn't give up with his side pressure and that forced Ryan to go into a king's move but that was also not enough first round was an absolute war then they just agreed to go to the straps because there was no point in wasting some time they both knew that none of them are strong enough is strong enough to prevent the other one from getting the slip so second round once again ryan tried to hook this time 
and this is something that Ryan may have to address in the future. He has been arm wrestling for over a decade now and still he has to resort to completely different strategies when the buckle is or is not on his hand. When the buckle was on his hand in this round, he went for a hook and when the buckle is on opponent's hand, he goes for a top roll. That's a common strategy that he always applies in all of his matches. And then final third round once again, an under the table kings move and Ron was kind of frustrated at this point but still he did not give up and then there was a foul which was very close to the losing position in a kings move by Ryan so 3-0 victory for Ron Bath. I will say that that was an amazing match and Ryan was probably only a couple of percentage weaker in the first round from turning this match around. Bogdan Stoika with a 4-2 victory over BLM. Ryan has defeated Bogdan in the past and there was a match scheduled at WL between Ryan and BLM so maybe this answers some questions questions. Bogdan won the first two rounds easily, then he lost his hand to BLM, then after that he resorted to a flop press which worked in one round, but then BLM also won a couple of rounds, he made a comeback. This was also a great back and forth match, we didn't really know until the end who is going to win, but the flop press worked in the final round as well, Bogdan Stoika 4-2. James Beach 4-0 victory domination over Adam Johnson. RVJ versus James Wall. In the first round, I think Rob was going for a top roll and James Wall's ability to set the hook is insane. That match was not going anywhere near the top roll direction from Rob. He got sucked in a hook, got caught off guard and he was pinned easily by James Wall. After that, Rob knew it's time to adjust some technique. He went straight into the hook against James Wall and then that was an absolute war which Rob ended up winning and then the flex of the guns from Rob. So this was a dominant comeback. The second round kind of ended relatively easily in favor of Rob Vigil Jr. The third round was an even better round. Probably that was for about 45 seconds in a deep hook war that Rob ended up winning. So overall, great performance, great display of bicep strength from Rob Vision Jr. Mindaugas Dulska's 4-0 victory over Tim Bresnan. I'll say this was one of the most disappointing matches. Not from Mindaugas' side, but Tim Bresnan didn't really do anything. He just laid back like he was, like the commentator was saying, he was riding his Harley Davidson and he just waited there. And after 5-10 seconds, he gave up in every single round, didn't try to do one different thing other than that mini king's move or an open arm top roll, which clearly wasn't working for him. 4-0, easy victory for Mindaugas Dulskas. Maybe age is catching up on Tim Bresnan, unlike Ron Bath. That's why he's not in the prime shape. Of course, not in the prime shape, but that's why he's not in a good shape anymore. Uncle John versus Beerman. Burgoyne. 3-2 victory for Uncle John. This was a title match and yet it was best of 5 for some reason. Some people are saying that this is making a mockery of the sport. They are presenting arm wrestling in a bad image. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. The only problem that I had with this match is that it shouldn't have been a main event match. Other than that, if these guys are willing to risk it for our entertainment, I think we should respect that. And the press conference fight between these two where we saw a bleeding Uncle John, obviously that was an attempt like WWE, not saying the blood was fake, but obviously it was not caused of that beer smash on his head. Uncle John was laying on the ground and that's where he cut himself like the guys in WWE do. So this is the extent up to which they are willing to go just to entertain us and I will always respect that kind of dedication. So whenever the match went in a hook, Beerman won relatively comfortably and whenever there was a top roll, a crack in the wrist, Uncle John was the dominant man. And there was one moment where the referee was strapping them up and Beerman smashed Uncle John's hand. It was like not even close to ready. The strap was just being applied and Uncle John's hand got smashed on the thumbtacks by Beerman Evan Burgoyne. So that was kind of uh, difficult to watch. It kind of pissed me off, but that's what we were watching this match for for entertainment. So overall, I'll say that was an absolutely amazing card.